Okay, for today we are doing application problems, which are mainly word problems. And uh, rather than have you write all the word problems down, I made a note sheet for you today. So, um, and then Iris, for you, you don't have to write the examples because we'll post that on Classroom as well. So you could just say like example one and then show the work. Does that make sense?
Then the question is, how many bags of candy will you have uh, in 10 weeks? And how many weeks will it take until you have 1 million bags of candy? If you don't eat it. If you don't eat it, you're right. So, yes? So, I know this might be a but um, after you eat it, does that mean they never grow again? Or like once you grow all that, like once you stop eating, it starts growing again? Uh, that is a great question, and I you can let your imagination run with that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we're doing this situation. We are going to be using this formula, and I'll talk you through the difference between this formula and the other two once we get to the other two. Okay. It's going to be really clear and easy to know when you're using this one versus when you use the other ones. Okay. So we're going to start with this one. So when it says, um, how many bags of candy will you have in 10 weeks? I wanna clarify a couple things that are not on here. In your homework tonight, the first thing that I always ask for is for you to write a model. Okay, basically what that means is I want you to write an equation. I want you to write the thing that we're gonna use to be able to answer the questions. But I don't want you to just jump in and answer the questions right away. Okay, so do I know if I'm just thinking about before it starts with how many bags of candy will you have in 10 weeks? That statement before that, do I know my ending amount? No, because no, it just says you start off with four bags of candy, every week they double in number as long as you don't eat them. You know what your P is though. Right, good, so I know my, I know my P. What is my P? Four. Four, four because that's the amount I'm starting with. Oh wait, no, just think, okay. So you're writing like you're rewriting the equation, but like filling in the letters. Okay. That of the things that I know. Yes. Okay, and then the B is the rate at which things are happening. Neruda. We're doubling, so times two. Yes, we're doubling, so that's going to be a two. And then the T, I don't know, right? Nothing is stated about T, except I can now define it. Yes. So when I ask you for a model, that is what I'm looking for. Okay, the stuff filled in, you should have A and you should have T there, and then you're gonna define T. What is T in? Any questions about the model to start with? Okay, so then we're gonna answer our first question, which says, how many bags of candy will you have in 10 weeks? What do I do to solve that? Put 10 for T. I'm going to put 10 in for T. How am I going to, how am I going to do that? Yeah, throw it into your calculator. Right, 2 to the 10 times 4, or you type that in exactly how it says into your calculator and it'll bust out an answer. So race says 4,096. Okay. Up above the example in bold, what does it say? For every problem, you can find the answer, and then you just answer to write the sentence. Good. So every single time, you're going to explain what your answer means. So in a sentence format, what does 4096 mean? In 10 weeks, you are cured. Okay, hold on. Neruda, go for it. In 10 weeks, you will cure 4,096 bags of candy. If you don't eat it. Right. It's predicated on that, though, already. <laughs> All right, good. So every time, I want you to explain your answer. Okay, which should be hopefully pretty easy if you keep in mind what things mean. Right, so if you know that you're finding the ending amount, hopefully you have in mind that that ending amount is bags of candy, not number of weeks. Okay, so explaining your answers. All right, then it says, how many weeks will it take until I have one million bags of candy? How do I figure that out? Go ahead, Bryce. So you put one million in for A and then solve for C. Good. Now you understand why we did the warm-up we did, right? Um, 
directly relates to your solving practices. So why don't you guys do that, solve that, get T for me. Um, and with word problems, um, you're gonna just give me, I'll see it in your work, the exact answer anyway, but you're gonna give me the approximate, that's the main thing that we need. Um, yeah. So whenever we are doing a problem that has multiple parts like this, um, do we have to write with T's every time? No, because mainly, the, so in your homework, you'll see where it'll say part A, write the model. Part B, answer this question. Part C, answer this question. So I tried to like separate it to make it easier to understand. Okay? You're welcome. Great question. So not only find T, but double check it. So uh, for the approximate answer, you still want us to write out every single possible because it gets... Yes, and then in your sentence you will round. Okay. Okay? Sound fair? Like, now we're getting down to, you're going to have one million bags in this exact second. Well, we could figure that out, but I'm not going to make it. Yeah. What do we do in the warm-up? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
it. Yeah, well, that, that can cause some problems. Can you, sure. can you write it up like an example? Just rewrite your log, like you write it down again in your notebook. It's, well, don't you already have it in your notebook? Yes, I can have it Well, we, <laughs> we did it here. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'll yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mainly I'm being a, a pain in your butt because I want you to come to office hours for that question. Okay. All right, example two. Example two, I'm, I am going to help you with. It's not as straightforward as you think. So example two says you started, shush, you started out the year with 100 pencils. Each month you notice that a quarter of them are missing. Your friends are thieves, which probably actually is pretty reasonable to happen in real life. Um, and then the question is, when will you have two pencils left? So let's write the model together. How would that look? OK, so we got A equals. Would it be A equals? 100, 1 fourth, 18, or no? Okay, you're close. But no, this is the 1 fourth, I guess. Okay, so that's the trick. Right? So it's 1 fourth are missing. What's the difference between that and the first example? You're instead of adding, you're taking. You're We're gaining, it. right? It's how many actually are there. It's doubling. So in this situation, so what you want to do is figure out how many you actually have, right? Not how many you're missing. How many you actually have, Nia? Three quarters. Yeah, so you would use three quarters. Now, if you are ever wondering like, ooh, did I set that equation up right? And what else do we need to include? Oh, Sorry. Mine is um, not. Good. Um, What you can do is say, okay, so after one month, right, if a quarter are missing from 100, how much is a quarter? 25. So how many do I actually have? 75. So I could say, okay, in my head, I know I'm supposed to get 75. In my calculator, you're going to type in 100 parentheses, 3 fourths, parentheses, 1. Right to the first power and check your answer. Okay. So if you're ever like, oh, I don't know if I set it up right, use logic to figure out, did I actually set it up right? Do I get the right result or not? All right. OK on that now? Because I'm not going to finish that question. I want to get us to the other side. So, interest. Do we have one? No, you'll do enough of them on the homework. Okay, interest problems. You have two formulas for interest. formulas and I'll go through and explain what they mean and when you use them. Oh, that's a one. <coughs> one plus R over N. <laughs> Sorry, I could do like the whole fancy one. There you go. This one is for 
what we call continuous compounding. Okay, so in, um, in the bank, right, when you go to a bank and you want to start a savings account. So for those of you who have been aching for like real world situations of when you're going to use this crap, here you go. That's what all of today is, right, is realizing, oh, these are actually applicable. And these interest problems are really, we'll do a lot more of them next year as well but they're really to help you be smarter financially when you leave high school, okay? Which is a good thing. So when you go to the bank, they will often ask you, like when you start a savings account, and that has a different formula and all that, but they're gonna say, do you want um, to compound continuously or do you want to compound daily or do you want to, like they're gonna give you a whole bunch of options and you need to be able to make the smart decision, right? Because you wanna have the banks help you and get as much money out of it as possible. So these two situations are, um, they're not as real life as I would like them to be because it's basically like you open a savings account and you put your money in and you never touch it. Not super real world, right? Like not many people have a savings account that they never ever touch. But for our purposes, situational purposes for right now, that's what we're gonna do. So E, you have seen before, E is your button on the calculator, that means E, 2.74 something, right? The P, same thing, the A, same thing, right? So A is your ending amount, P is your starting amount. Your R, your R is going to be your interest rate, The blue is the formula, and then, oh well, sorry, you're on the calculator. Yeah. You're, uh, the blue, E is in blue. Okay, so you so use the second button, not the alpha button. So there's an E to the X and then E, just E. You want the E to the X one. It should be right above oh. natural log. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay? I didn't know what color All right, so with this formula, A and P mean the same as they did over there. Your R is your interest rate, all otherwise known as your annual percentage rate. You'll see APR on paperwork. Um, and the trick with the APR is they always give it to you as a percentage. So what you need to do is make sure it's, you need it as a decimal, not a percentage. Okay, and then the T, in this case, you don't have to define it. It is always years. So your T is always going to be years. Yeah, I always think of this one as PERT as well. Okay. The trick of knowing when to use this formula is this phrase. Or it'll say compound continuously, but those two words have to be there for you to use this formula. Okay, and they might be in either order, right? It might say continuous compounding or compounding continuously. Um, but those words have to be there for you to use this formula. If those words are not there, you're not using that formula. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. The other equation, this last one that's a little bit gnarlier, this one um, is for compounding any other number of times. And we'll talk about different situations that that might occur. But again, you have to see the word compounding. So if you don't see compounding, you're back over at the PB to the T. 
Okay, if you see compounding, then you're deciding between the two. And then you're looking for a continuously, and if it's not there, you're back over to the harder one. Okay? All right. In this one, A and P, same thing. R, same thing as this guy over here. It's your interest rate or your APR. You need it as a decimal. Same situation. T is also in years. N, that's the new one. That's the number of times compounded per year, like within the year. Okay, so let's go over some situations. If I said that we are gonna compound monthly, What's N going to be? 12, because there's 12 months in a year. Right? What if I said we we're going to compound weekly? 56. Ooh, not 56, but you're 50, close. 52. 52. But again, if you used 56 in your formula, and as long as you're showing your work, I'll know that that's not a, like, a major error. That's just because you didn't know a calendar. And that's okay, right? Like not everybody knows the calendar inside and out. We learned this so in Josh's class. So that's, that's a super reason. different thing than using the wrong formula, for example, or like completely blowing it. Okay, so if you get one of these numbers wrong, as long as you're showing your work, it's like, I get it, okay? Um, what if I said uh, like biannually? How many times would you be doing it over the course of the year? Two, Two times. Um, what about um, daily is a, a good one? 365. Leave beer next year? Huh? Okay, so anyways, you get the idea that N is going to change and you have to pay attention to your wording. So, example three. Oh, no. Actually, you know what? You know what? We're going to skip straight to example four. Because it's going to test everything that I need. Too bad, Race. <laughs> All right. Okay, example four. This is like a little more. Shh, listen, please. It's a little more realistic than example three is. You're gonna be given, you go into a bank where you want to invest your $300 that you earned from babysitting, okay? Um, maybe you've been babysitting for 72 years, I don't know. But the bank gives you two options. Now you have to realize, and I'm not saying this to like make you distrust everybody in the world, but banks are out to take your money. Right? They, they give you options, listen, they give you options because they assume people are coming in financially ignorant. So they give you options thinking you're going to pick the poor option where they are going to give you less money. So what you need to do is you need to be really smart about making decisions when you're dealing with big banks, credit cards all of that business because it's gonna matter in your long-term future, okay? So you go into the bank, they're gonna give you two options. Option one is to invest your money in, uh, invest your $300 in an account that gives 4.9% interest and compounds daily. Okay, so what um, formula am I gonna use for that first situation? The com compounding The first amount. one, so let's go ahead and figure that part out. Right, so how would I set up that equation? So we're gonna have option one. What does that equation look like if I'm setting that up? A equals 300 parentheses one plus 4.7 over. Okay, hold on. It's 4.9, but. Oh, it's a percentage, so we have to do that. So what would that be as a decimal? Point zero four nine. Four nine. Damn it. <laughs> Wait. How do you do that? It says option one. It says four point nine. Oh yeah. 
Sheesh. Yeah, you just move the decimal place two to the left when you're going from percentage to decimals. If you're going from a decimal to a percent, you move it two to the right. So I got 0 0.049 over 365. 365 to the power of what? N is 365. 365. And T is, oh, and that's given later. It says which option is better over the course of 15 years? So I'm going to use 15. Now, here's the trick. Your calculator. How to use a lot of parentheses. So, super annoying, but I'm going to help you. You have 300 and then this first parenthesis, and then we're just going to cover our butts and add in this one. And then we absolutely have to add in this one. Okay, so in your calculators, type in 300, then do one parenthesis. One plus another parenthesis, and then do your 0.049 divided by 365. Closing that parenthesis and the other one, so two in a row, and then carrot button, right? To the power of, and then when you do the carrot button, um, if if your calculator takes you upstairs, you probably don't need the parentheses, but you can always be safe. Right? And then just to the, and then parenthesis 365 times 15, close your parenthesis. And then press enter. You can do it all in one step. Okay, so what did we get? 625.613734. I got six. You got 46 instead of 47. Okay, that's okay. Because when we write our sentence, Okay, we're, yours is close enough, we're okay. So then when we write our sentence, and I don't feel like writing it down because I'm running out of time, what would that sentence look like? Go ahead, Grace. I think Grace. the one after 15 years, you'll have 16.5 dollars and 62 cents. 61, probably, right? Well, yeah, well, it's just probably, or I don't know, I'm a kid, <laughs> okay. um, The other thing in your explanation, don't forget units. Yes. Okay, so if you give me a sentence and you say after 15 years I will have 625.61 and you forget to either put the dollar sign or you forget to write dollars, then you're gonna get dinged. Okay, units matter, units are important. Okay, then option two says, sorry, were there any questions in this, that first option? It's mainly all calculator work. Uh, Race did it. Race, do you want to say the sentence again? With option one, after 15 years, you will have 625 dollars and 61 cents. Okay. Okay, then option two, it says for you to invest your $300 in an account that gives 4.7% interest and compounds continuously. Which formula am I using? Hey, PERT. PERT. Right? So do you recognize the wording that's there that helps you decide which one? Okay. All right, so go ahead, set up and solve option two for me and we'll check and answer together. Set up and solve option two and we'll check it. But it is. Plus A equals 607.154005. Okay, so is everybody in agreement with this guy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't show all the work, but this would be the statement in your sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so which option is better? Option one. Option one, why? You get more money. You get more money. Cool. What? Yeah, I, for real. That's like, what, maybe three coffees. 
And you put eight more into the top floor. Yeah. There you go. All right, cool. So you have the formulas. You know the wording that you're looking for on things. So if you don't see um, compounding, you're using the PBT, right? Peanut butter to the time. Um, and then this homework that I'm assigning now, you still have about eight minutes of class today. Six problems. It's not due till Monday. Okay. But your quiz corrections are due tomorrow. Okay, so decide what you want to work on. Oh, oh yeah, can you post each of those for me?